early pad process, and we realize, oh, okay, they want an open span door bridge. I was like, whoa, well, that's kind of a little bit scary because these aren't built very often. The reason they're not built very often is it's it's a lot. It's very there's a lot of labor. It's a lot of cast in place work. It's expensive and it's slow. It's far. That's the way it has been done in the past. So our challenge was we were scratching our heads, like, okay, we have to do this different. We have to approach this different. We have to think different. So what we've done on this project is it's really kind of flipped the script. And what we've done is instead of doing all this cast in place work, instead of doing all that forming out over the water, we're going to build this using precast system. That was our design approach from the very beginning. And what that does is it allows you to not only build it faster, it allows you to build it cheaper. You're doing work off-site, so you're not having as many environmental impacts. There's less construction activities happening on site, which is good for all residents. Um, so we did a lot of, uh, it was a little, this might be a little bit too uh, technical here, but uh, one thing that we did for this project is we, we built it three-dimensional. Um, and we did that really, there's two, there's a two-fold reason for that. Number one, it, you know, with it being precast and there's concrete and there's steel and there's uh, post-tensioning ducts going in all these different directions, we built this three-dimensionally for clash detection so we can find conflicts where things are hitting each other, running into each other. So that was that was reason number one. Reason number two was it's 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 a complex bridge that's not built very often. We wanted to provide the bidders, you know, we designed it, the contractors are going to bid it. We wanted to provide them with tools and, and visualization aids that will allow them to understand our plans more quickly. So, so really for those two reasons, we, we Adrian built this and it, it's really, I think, really helped not only uh, us, the, the reviewers from, from FDOT and the county, it just helps you understand the project better. I really think it's gonna help people who are uh, bidding the project really understand. Um, as you know, this project, uh, the new bridge is built right on top of the old bridge, so that's going to require a full detour. That right there is the detour route, the uh, ISB bridge. Uh, fortunately, it's pretty close, but uh, the, there will be a full detour for the entire construction. And uh, as we've been talking about it throughout, but again, we want to get back to the point of it all. And, and, and again, I read it in the, the uh, newspaper article that came out yesterday about the bridge, and I agree completely. It, uh, you can name a bridge the Veterans Memorial Bridge. That doesn't mean it has Veterans Memorial elements to it. We, I think one of the interests of the committee and certainly our subcommittee of veterans was to really make this something special that we really pay tribute to our veterans and the veterans of Volusia County. And so uh, a lot of that is what you see here today. I'm just gonna walk step through some of those elements uh, real quick. Um, certainly uh, the, tw the overlook plaques are something on the bridge. It's part of the bridge structure that, that um, it's a, a great uh, idea that came out of that committee. Um, they're laser edged granite plaques. There's a sample on the, the furthest left uh, of that, that wall of the, the laser etching process. Just takes a piece of granite and, and dials in photography, essentially. Great imagery upon those, plat, uh, those uh, granite slates. So each overlook, there's 28 overlooks. Each will have one of those plaques. Again, they're right behind you there. And they work in a chronological order. So again, starting with the American Revolution working all the way through modern times across the bridge, and we're going to leave a couple spots open, unfortunately, for future conflicts as they arise. Um, each plaque includes the etched image, obviously, the description of the conflict, KI, WI, WI, MIA, Volusia County specific numbers, a uh, QR code that links to additional data on your website uh, for more information on that conflict, and of course the royal plate that Kat mentioned uh, that also details the conflict. So that information. Here's some of the locations of those overlooks and how they kind of cross the bridge and then end up back at the park. The idea again is that you cross down the bridge, use the underpass, and then come back the other way to complete the circuit. Um, and then just here's a couple uh, images of some of the plaques here. Again, that, that is the same as they're behind you here. Imagery combined with a brief description and the numbers. Um, the other element, obviously, that, that's off the bridge was this Veterans Memorial Plaza. Again, I talked a little bit earlier about coming up with those concepts, but let's talk a little bit more detail about what's in that plaza and some of the special features. Um, obviously, around the back of the plaza, around the cenotaph, if you will, we have uh, seven flags. We have branches of service. We have the U.S. flag, and uh, Mike's going to kill me if I don't remember this. <laughs> we have MIA. <laughs> yeah, and PMW MIA. So, um, we have the, uh, so this, this memorial honors the branch of service as well as Volusia County um, uh, 
soldiers, uh, supporting organizations. There's the five uh, stones around the cenotaph here, which you see in the front. Um, and uh, again, they, they cover um, prisoners of war, PIA, uh, uh, MIA, uh, support our troops, uh, the different uh, branches of service, Congressional Medal of Honor, and Purple Heart. And those, again, you can see them around the back there. Then there's this central spine, which again runs down uh, between you uh, in the audience here. Um, that feature is going to have a water feature that's running down the middle, and then on either side of it are getting more of these uh, granite etch plaques with the names of all the soldiers from Volusia County uh, who uh, made the ultimate sacrifice. Um, field stones, there's also going to be, uh, there's an area outside the park that leads towards the parking lot. You want to make sure that, 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 that all this land is, is part of the park, and, and when you enter the area, you kind of get the feeling of that you're stepping on the hollow ground and, sense of importance of that space. And so there's going to be these field stones kind of stretched out, kind of reminiscent of Arlington uh, with the lined up uh, stones. Uh, and then the soldiers return. I can't forget this. Um, this is not in our park plans, but it's an incredibly important part of this uh, park design. And uh, the idea here is that there'll be uh, bronze statues and they'll be kind of emerging uh, forward in time, uh, if you will. So there'll be soldiers from World War One, World War Two, Vietnam, uh, moving forward, and they'll be coming out of the water, and then the last soldier will be up on land in a space that we've provided, um, being greeted home by a wife and a child, or a father and mother. Um, and so, and there's also that, the dedication papers. Yeah, and, the de and then around, uh, I should mention that, um, around the cenotaph also there's dedication papers, so there's an opportunity for folks to, to essentially buy a paper, donate to the cause. Um, I think you've noticed on some of these slides it says construction not funded. The park itself, it's important to note, is not funded with the federal funding that comes from the bridge. So the bridge and all those plaques, those are all funded. The park has not been funded. So that's a, a process that is going to be going on over the next couple of years, uh, raising funding for the park. I think it's a, a tremendous opportunity to add a, a feature to the Daytona waterfront and kind of begin that process of rejuvenation for the waterfront here. Um, oh, schedule. Um, we are, uh, we're done uh, with the design. The design is done. Uh, so we, we've turned in our final plans, um, and uh, we're kind of, in, 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 we're just kind of doing the, the final permitting uh, aspects, which we expect to be done sometime in May. So we anticipate the project uh, probably being advertised early, early fall, um, and construction starting Thank you. So, uh...